Oftentimes in residential construction, the steel is the more expensive building material in comparison to wood, and it's more difficult to modify in the field. So they decided to fill that gap with some wood blocking and hope that everything would be fine. Obviously it's not. Commonly, you wanna make your bearing plate as wide as your bearing condition, or as wide as the beam that you're supporting above. This isn't always the case, but if you can make that happen, then you should. For this beam and column, there's two things that you need to consider to determine your bearing area. The bearing capacity of the steel post and the bearing capacity of the wood beam. Steel is stronger in compression when compared to wood. So if you were to just be looking at the steel bearing plate, you could probably calculate that the plate doesn't need to be all that big in order to transfer the load from the beam above. However, that is oftentimes not the controlling case. Because the wood is softer or has less compressive capacity, the bearing area for that wood beam needs to be larger than the steel post below. When designed correctly, this is why you often see that the steel bearing plate is much larger than the supporting column below it. It's not aiding the steel post at all. Rather, it's providing enough surface bearing area for the wood beam to transfer all of the reaction force down into the column without crushing the wood beam. The best solution that they should have done is replace this short steel post with one of the correct height. They instead made up the difference in elevation by packing it with two bys flat on their side. This may have been an adequate solution if the flat two bys could handle the compressive load. However, they did something else which caused a failure in the connection altogether. They added these two shims at the far edges of the flat two bys. The shims create this air gap between the two bys and the beam above ultimately meaning that the only bearing surface are at these extreme ends. This has created a more complex load path because now that load needs to get through the shim and ultimately make its way all the way back to the steel column below. This one creates a smaller bearing surface for the beam above, not good. And two, it introduces something called cross grain bending, which is not something that engineers are permitted to have when they're designing wood structures. Cross grain bending pretty much just means that you can't have tensile stresses built up in a wood member that are perpendicular to the direction of the wood grain. The wood grain of these flat two bys is in and out of the page. And I believe we have kind of a strut and tie type of load path happening here, where you have compression forces kind of working their way diagonally down to the steel column in compression struts, while you have a tension tie up at the top of the wood pack. In the tension tie is where you have tensile forces, and those forces in this condition are indeed perpendicular to the direction of the grain, causing a failure in the wood member. Anytime you have tensile forces in your wood members, make sure that it is parallel to your grain in your wood member. All right, peace.